Hey what's going on developers, welcome back to the Next.js full course. Today we are going to talk about how we can implement one-to-one -one relationships between the tables in our database with type ORM in our Next.js application. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, this is the database schema that we are going to create through this course. So far we just have created the property entity. But today we are going to create the property feature entity and then we're going to create a one-to-one -one relationship between the property feature entity and also the property table. So what is the one-to-one -one relationship? In a one-to-one -one relationship between these two entities, one instance of the property entity is associated with exactly one instance of the property feature entity and vice versa. It means that each property feature record in this table belongs to only one record within the property table. It's really obvious here because the property feature table describes the feature of each property. It describes the number of bedrooms, bathrooms, the area and other feature of each property. So each property needs to have one property feature and each property feature instance only belongs to just one property. So this is a one-to-one -one relationship. Another obvious example here is the user entity and user profile entity. Each user has only one profile and each profile has only belonged to one user. This is a really obvious example that describes a one-to-one -one relationship. So now let's get back to our Next.js application and see how we can create this type of relationship with TypeRM. Okay, back to our project. In the previous episodes, we have created our first entity of our application inside the entities directory. So now in the first step, we need to create the property feature entity in, in our Next.js application. So here in this directory, we're going to create another file. We're going to call it property feature that entity that ts okay first we need to export a class here class property feature and then we need to mark it with the entity decorator so now it is going to be a table inside our database so the first column here is the id of the table which is going to be a number and we're going to mark it with the at primary generator column decorator okay as you can see these decorators are comes from the type program itself so now the id field is a auto increment property primary key in our database. So let's get back to the database diagram. You can see it has a bedroom, bathroom, and parking spots, and also the area. So we're going to create these four fields within the property feature entity. So let's create the bedroom field, which its type is going to be a number, and let's mark it with a column decorator. Now it is a column within the property feature table. So let's just copy these two lines of code and then paste it here. We just need Need to change the field name to bathrooms okay let's create another one which is going to be parking spots which actually is the number of the parking spots that its associated property has and then let's create another one this time it is going to be the area which of course is going to be a number now let's get back to our diagram it has three boolean type has swimming pool has garden or yard and has balcony so let's just copy the previous code and rename the field to has balcony and also we need to change the type of field to boolean let's just copy that and then paste it here and just rename the field to has garden or yard let's create another one and this is going to be has swimming pool so add it here Okay, now we're almost done with the property feature entity, but here we have a property ID field, which is actually the firing key of the table. We're going to talk about the firing key just in a second when we are going to create the one-to-one -one relationship. So for now, let's just run the application and then go to the Neon server and see if this table has been created in our database. So just run the dev server and the server is running without any error. So let's go to the Neon console to our project here and open up the tables list here as you can see it creates a property feature for us and you can see it has all the fields that we have defined inside it so let's get back to the nest.js project and let's close the terminal and you might notice here we haven't registered the property feature in the 
dbconfig of our type ORM connection to the Postgres database. And that's because we have added this regular expression in the entities list of our database config file. So it actually consider any file inside our database as entity if it ends with dot entity and then dot ts or js file. And as you can see, our property feature dot entity dot ts file follow this naming rule. So with this trick, we don't need to manually register each entity that we create in our NestJS application in this entities list here. So that's why we didn't register the new entity here in this entities list. Okay, so now let's create the one-to-one -one relationship between the property entity and property feature entity. Okay, now let's go to the property entity and here let's create another field property feature and its type is going to be from property feature class entity that we have just created. Okay, and here in order to define the one-to-one -one relationship, we just need to use one-to-one -one decorator from the type ORM. So now we are telling the type ORM that this is not a normal field, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. Now we need to define the other side of our one-to-one -one relationship. So this one-to-one -one decorator takes two parameters, the target and the reverse side. These two parameters are callback functions. So with the first one, which is the target, we need to pass a callback function, which returns the type of the target side of this relationship, which in this case is property feature entity. So we just need to pass a callback and just return the property feature entity out of it. Now we can pass the reverse side callback, but this is not necessary. So for now, let's just leave it as it is. And we're going to go back here and add the reverse side callback. And I'm going to tell you what is the benefit of adding the reverse side callback function here. But with just the first callback, which as I said, is the target callback, it is totally fine. And the relationship works for us. Now we need to go to the other side of the relationship, which is the product property feature and use the one-to-one -one relationship inside it just as we use it here. So, so let's save this first and go to the property feature and here we just need to create a field for the property feature. So we are going to say that it is going to be property which its type now needs to be property entity. Now we need to add a one-to-one -one decorator and define the target side. We need to pass a callback and this time the target side is property entity. Now if I go to the Neon console, here you can see the property table and also the property feature. It actually haven't created the relationship inside the schema of the Postgres database yet. In order to do that, we need to use another decorator in the type ORM. So I get back to the NestJS and here we need to decide which side of this one-to-one -one relationship should contain the firing key. We can put that inside the property entity or we can just put that inside the property feature entity. I'm going to put it inside the property feature entity and in order to do that we just need to use the joint column decorator. So here I just use join column and if I save that and open up the terminal you can see the server is running without an error. Let's go back to the neon console and here let's refresh the page. You can see it creates a property ID for us which is actually the firing key of the property feature table which refer to the property table. So what is the point of creating this one one to one relationship between these two tables you might be asking. It actually ensures the data consistency. What I mean here is that if you want to put something inside the property ID field here, the value must be present in the property table. For example, let's add a property record here. Uh, let's put something gibberish. So let's save the change. So now we have the ID2. Now let's add another record to the property feature. Let's just put something random and now here in the property id if i put two it now refers to the property with the id two inside the property table you can save the changes and now here you can see we have a property column which is actually not a physical link it just shows us the property that this property id firing key refers inside the property table now let's change the property ID here to something that does not exist in the property table. So I put three here. If I save the change, you can see it gives us an error and it says that the property feature violate the firing key constraint of this firing key, which is actually the name of the firing key that the database creates for this field. 
this is called data consistency and and is actually the reason that we create the relationships inside our database so we can't put something that is not existed inside the property table okay now if i change back to id2 and you can see it does not gives us the error okay now let's talk about the reverse side parameter of the one-to-one -one declarator so let's get back to the vs code here and i go to the property entity here inside the one-to-one -one, we can put another callback it takes one parameter which is an instance of the property feature so i just call it property feature and here we should return the field from the property feature that is associated in this one-to-one -one relationship and that is the property field okay now we can do that inside the property feature so here in the one-to-one -one relationship the creator we can pass the reverse side callback it takes one instance of the property entity the target side actually and it returns the fields inside the target side that is associated with this field so it is going to be property dot property feature field okay now you might ask if it's not necessary to put the reverse side callback in the one-to-one -one, why we should add it inside this declarator the reason that we add this reverse callback is that we can have a bi-directional navigation here. It means that here, if we have an instance of the property feature, we can easily access to its associated property. And if we have a property instance, we can easily access to its associated property feature instance. With this reverse function, we can also remove the other side one-to-one -one declarator. Okay, now let's talk about the cascade operations in our relationships. So let's go to the property entity here. Here inside the one-to-one -one relationship, we can pass a configuration object and inside it, we can set the cascade to true, okay? So now if we remove the property instance, the database will automatically remove the associated property feature instance from our database. Also, if we update the ID of the current property instance in our database, the database management system will automatically update the value of the foreign key inside the property feature. We can also pass a list here and inside it we can specify for example only update so now we have the cascade feature only on the update operations if we delete this property the property feature instance that is associated with this property will still remain inside our database so here in this list we can specify the specific operation that you want to put the cascade feature on okay so just let's set the cascade option on all the operations Okay, so that's it for creating the one-to-one -one relationship between your entities with type ORM in your Nest.js application. In the next video, I'm going to explain the one-to-many and many-to-one relationships and implement these type of relationship in our database with type ORM. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell in order to get informed about the next video. Also, if this video was helpful for you, I will be really happy if you liked the video. So stay tuned for the next episode of this course and have a nice time. Bye-bye.